Hello everyone, reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas, and with me here today, I have Team 19458, Equilibrium EXE, second year team for, from Potomac, Maryland. Recently at the Mechanics Road Qualifier, they had a 1 plus 5 autonomous on the mid-junction every single match. That consistency is just so hard to achieve, and I'm really excited to learn how they did that and more coming up on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. SolidWorks can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to solidworks.com first to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Alex, Sebastian, can you guys walk me through your drivetrain, how you've adapted it for the power play season and things you're really proud of specifically? Uh, so we've adapted this drivetrain to be a 14 by 15 drivetrain. Um, we've uh, incorporated three odometry pods in it, and it's powered by a 435 one-to-one uh, -one gear ratio, so that we're fast. Um, Sebastian can elaborate more on why we decided to be more of a robot or fast robot through our strategy. Yeah, so at the beginning of the season, we did a points analysis in order to determine what kind of strategy we go for. At the very beginning, we saw that there were these two main strategies of either being a stacker or a roamer bot. And we decided that through that, that our, a roamer strategy would be preferable. And so we made our drivetrain as compact as possible without making any sacrifices to our odometry while also keeping very fast. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Um, and, you know, you guys have clearly done a ton of driver practice. I mean, just seeing like your control on the field, it's so obvious that you guys know how this robot works and know like all the ins and outs of it and the game. And so... Having done all this, is there any changes you'd like to make to your drivetrain like for the rest of the season, or is it just all good? Uh, one of the changes we'd like to make is we'd like to lighten up the drivetrain by pocketing it. And we also, we're going to go through a couple minor redesigns so that we could incorporate better tension replacements. Um, otherwise, I think our drivetrain is pretty well set for our season. Mm -hmm. And I think like a 435 RPM ratio, that's what you said you guys are running is a little bit on the faster end for teams. So if you have that driver practice and you have that control, then it is definitely super manageable and very advantageous as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys do at your next competition. Um, let's go on and transition a little bit between your drivetrain and your intake. One thing that I'm sure everyone is super interested to know about is your funnel or like drop down. And so walk me through it, how it's changed throughout the season uh, and how it works now. Um, yeah, so um, one noticeable thing about a funnel is that it's more or less entirely 3D printed. Um, so this allowed us to create multiple iterations of it uh, within like the span of like a week. Um, so this is actually a third iteration. Um, our very first iteration had like super long prongs, um, but we realized super long prongs would not like be the most optimal strategy um, because it wouldn't allow us to uh, fully, you know, uh, position the cone the way we wanted to in the autonomous period because the cones were placed against the walls. Uh, so that led us to, you know, uh, shortening the prongs um, and extending the prongs forward instead of having the uh, prongs extend forward. Sure. Um, and so uh, regarding how it, yeah. Yeah. Can we see the side view? Like, can we rotate the robot 90 degrees? I think we'll be able to see like a lot more of the funnel. And I think you guys probably have some cool features uh, that you can show like with that side view better. But yeah, continue, Kerry. Um, okay. So uh, Regarding how it actually like actuates, um, we have uh, we power it using two servos, one on the left and one on the right side, um, and so this is uh, this uh, forms you know a coaxial virtual fiber. So the one on the left controls this chain link, which allows us to um, raise and lower the funnel uh, as we see fit, while the one on the right helps us extend it forward and uh, and backwards. Yeah, that's super interesting. And, you know, my initial thought like with a funnel is there's not like a need to extend forward and backwards, especially if you guys don't like have any horizontal extension on your deposit. But you guys have obviously seen a need to have that you wouldn't have added it otherwise. So uh, how did that work? Like, how did you recognize that there was a requirement to move forward and backwards? And how do you use it in your matches? Um, yeah, sure. So um, the main like reason uh, why we decided to have it extend forward was because of our arm actually. Um, the reason we have our arm at this length is it's the optimal length for us to rotate 
it, uh, around the perimeter of a robot uh, without hitting the drag train. And so to accommodate for that length, uh, we had to have the funnel uh, extend forward. Um, and so we had two options. One was to have it uh, on like a rotation-based actuator uh, like we have now, uh, or we could have mounted it on a set of linear slides. Uh, but we decided to go with a rotation-based uh, actuator because it was most uh, space efficient for a robot. Sure. And so is your funnel something that you use every single cycle you do, or is it just brought out for like those specific situations where you need it? Uh, we use it every uh, cycle um, because our funnel also helps uh, line up the cones with our claw mm -hmm. uh, so that we don't have to line up manually. It allows us to speed up our cycles by ha uh, not having to manually line up the robot. Our robot lines its cone up to where we normally put up. Yeah, I mean, that makes that makes a ton of sense. And, you know, speaking of your claw, let's go on and talk about it. I've heard you guys have a very interesting name and walk me through it. I'm sure people are very interested to know how your claw works. Yeah, so our claw is a, uh, well, inverse claw, really, that uh, we call the nose picker, uh, that it drops down and uh, grabs the cone from the inside diameter. And uh, it's powered by a servo that's uh, having a linkage rotate, um, kind of, nice. that's having a linkage rotate, like, outward on the, because there's, like, an inner lip on the cone that mm -hmm. we noticed uh, when we were uh, looking at the cone's design. And so the claw kind of grabs on that uh, inner lip in order to have a secure hold. Yeah, that's super interesting. And can we see you grab, like, can we see you actuate the claw without a cone uh, there? Would that be possible? Uh, yeah, I, we, uh, the, although the way that... Oh. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. yeah. No, that that's a great demonstration. Yeah, wow, that is very, very interesting. And obviously it has worked super well for you guys this season. Do you have any changes you'd like to make to it or is it just really, really well done? Uh, so some uh, one change that we actually have already made is having this uh, shroud that goes along the outside. This is so that way we have an additional alignment for when we uh, try to drop down and grab some cones. And we're also considering having a, a horizontal extension so that way we can uh, reach out farther uh, and uh, deposit uh, sooner without having to move the drivetrain as much. Sure. And uh, one question I have for you guys, like talking about your deposit as a whole, is have you had any issues like with scoring in the sense that it's like you guys obviously have an alignment, like a funnel for the cone. Has it been difficult not having a similar feature for the junction? Or has that just been an issue you've been able to solve with a ton of driver practice? Uh, that's an issue we've mostly been able to solve through driver practice. Um, but the reason why we needed the funnel for pickup is the top diameter of the cone is really small. Mm -hmm. And so we needed that really close precision in order mm -hmm. to pick up. But because the bottom diameter of the cone is a lot larger, we can get away with being uh, in within like an inch of the junction to drop off. So I feel uh, that that pre uh, precision for pickup versus precision for dropping is very different. Got it. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. So going on to the rest of your deposit, let's start with the turret and long arm you have. How is it powered? How has it changed throughout the season? And are there any issues you guys have faced with it? Yeah, so our turret is a uh, plus minus 90, allowing us to uh, you know stay in one lane and be able to reach both uh, ju the junction on our left and on our right. Um, that uh, our slides are three stages. One stage is a uh, kind of a carousel or not care, so carriage, carriage yeah. that, uh, that allows it to go all the way down and all the way up along the length of the slide, and thus allowing it to keep our center of gravity stable, as well as uh, get that extra length all the way to the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I guess kind of an issue that we had to solve is with our wiring here, that at the beginning we did not have a cable chain onto there, and so... We, we would have worries of our wiring kind of get sticking up outside of 18 slash, you know, getting damaged. Mm -hmm. And the cable chain really helped out with that. Yeah. And so uh, let's first break down your arm. So how are you powering it? So it's powered via a servo that's uh, right there. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, programmed so that way it only uh, moves 90 degrees and plus minus. That looks like a GoBuilder servo? Yes, okay. uh, standard go build a servo. Okay. Uh, same as the one on the claw. Got it. Got it. And do you guys have any like plans to change that out for like a faster servo or one with more torque or anything like that, or has it just been like more than consistent enough for you guys? 
uh, yeah, the servo itself has been very consistent for us. So um, I think we're pretty happy with the performance of it. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome, right? If there's no need to change something, you know, don't. So going on to your lift, I'm very interested in, by the fact that you guys have a carriage for the last stage. I definitely, definitely think that's the right decision out there. I think teams uh, often just use like drawer slides for all the levels and then they have like this top sticking out. I've heard teams call it like a javelin before, but they have this top sticking out that really just like gets in the way of everything and is unnecessary. So which linear rails are you guys using and are you using those for all the levels or just for the last level? Yeah, so we're only using uh, the carriage carriage linear slide on the last level. And then behind it, we have two stages of Masumi slides. Mm -hmm. um, and can we see a side view of that? Oh, yeah. If you see here, the kind of blocky mm -hmm. um, ones is the carriage, and then beside it are the Masumi slides. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic. And this seems like a very um, advanced or very... Like, it's a much more complex and mechanically detailed lift system as compared to what teams traditionally run with, like, uh, linear drawer slides and viper slides and long robotics and what have you. So, being a second-year team, was this, like, your guys' first time using this type of system, or do you have previous experience with it? Uh, we did utilize Mitsumi slide last year. We utilized uh, two-stage and multiple of them. Uh, however, this year we did use three-stage and carriage slides, so... Um... But personally, as a lot of our members have experience from uh, other teams, uh, this is not, even before last season, this was not our first experience with consumers. Got it. Yeah, no, that, that's uh, really great. It seems like you guys have a really well put together implementation uh, of the slide system. So that's very nice to see. And I see you guys have like some cross bracing going around. So talk to me about like how you've achieved rigidity in the robot just like throughout like the whole system. Yeah, so the, a lot of it uh, is a go build a base. So uh, as you see here that we have a, a long a go build a low side U channel as well as a, a go build a beam that goes across so allowing to have mm -hmm. you know triangle shape and as is well known as the strongest shape. Um, and uh, we have uh, these plates on the side are actually uh, steel. Oh, wow. uh, aluminum, I mean, oh, okay. uh, and that uh, we uh, hand machined uh, so that way it also gives us additional rigidity along the sides of our robot. And uh, well, a lot of it is covered up by the shroud, but underneath is obviously a lot of go builder parts and beams mm -hmm. that keep the robot together. Gotcha, yeah. And you guys have amazing hardware, but equally as amazing as your software. So, can you guys give us an overview of all the sensors you guys have on the robot and then talk a little bit about how you use each one? So the first sensor that we've already talked about is really we have these two limit switches, one on either side of the nose picker, and those are used to as soon as we so actually when we pick up a cone, we actually we're slowly lowering uh, the lift until we detect the cone and the and then as soon as we detect a cone, it will automatically grab and then raise the lift a little. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. And uh, going on like to your lift and your drivetrain and everything else? Yeah, so on our drivetrain, we actually, we use rewheel odometry. Um, so we have, we so we have dead wheels for that. Um, those are just custom odometry pods. Yeah, fantastic. And is that library uh, that you're using for odometry, is that something that you guys have developed and written on your own? Or are you using like some resource and library that already exists like Roadrunner or anything else? Ah, we are using Roadrunner. Okay, got it. Um, and then going on to your lift, obviously to have such uh, precise control of your lift, you definitely need to have some sort of encoder or distance sensor, or some sensor to know where your lift is. So how are you guys doing that? Uh, and, you know, talk about it. Yeah, so we use uh, a motor encoder. And the thing that we actually do is, so we have our lift powered by two motors. And we actually, we actually did our wiring, so we're only reading the encoder from one of the motors, mm -hmm. but it's wired to go to two ports, so that like both of our motors always have the same encoder reading to keep them in sync. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, and no, I, I think that's definitely very impressive. And do you guys have any plans to add more sensors or any more software changes, um, or is everything just like smooth sailing so far? So the sensors that we want to add, we actually are thinking about adding 
a sensor inside of our funnel here uh, so that we can detect when a cone is there because currently the only way we can detect a cone when we're when we're intaking is through the limit switches mm -hmm. on our nose picker. Yeah, that's awesome. And I guess like the last question I have for you guys is what is like what do you think is like the biggest factor in contributing to the consistency of your autonomous? Having an autonomous that does the same exact thing every single time in a competition is just so difficult and so impressive. Um, how do you guys do it? So we did a lot of like fine tuning of our Roadrunner coordinates. Uh, we really take advantage of the Roadrunner coordinate system. So we store we store all of our coordinates in like vectors, and then we will take absolute values and add the headings during initialization after our drivers select our alliance and starting position. So that also contributes to us being able to start from any of the four positions on the field uh, and to always have a consistent auto. Yeah, I, that's very insightful. Equilibrium with EXT, I think this has been a fantastic interview. Thank you so much for spreading this knowledge, and I'm sure teams will learn a ton from this. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash FIRST to register your team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.